The mystery is buried in our remotest past, when our ancestors shared the same evolutionary ladder as the apes. Their ways of treating sickness and disease offer the snapshot of what our own medicines might have been millions of years ago. But do they understand their actions? We've come full circle and are back in the Mahali Mountains of Tanzania with our closest relatives, the chimpanzees. The rainy season here lasts six months, from November to May. There's little shelter from violent storms and torrential rains. While thick fur provides some protection, they frequently get soaked. This is a difficult time for chimpanzees. They're vulnerable to sickness, catch colds and coughs. With the rains comes a scarcity of good food. Chimps are omnivores. They eat meat, leaves and fruit, things like figs and a sour tasting citrus type fruit called saba fruit. <laughs> But this is not the season of plenty. Ripe fruits are difficult to find. This is a rare treat, not to be shared. Primatologist at Kyoto University, Professor Mike Huffman, and Mahale Park officer, Mohamedi Kalunde, have been working together for some time on the subject of animal self-medication. Their work accounts for much of what we know today about how wild chimpanzees treat sickness. Torrential rains and a poor diet leaves the chimps weak and tired. They're vulnerable to attack by parasites. <laughs> the chimpanzees get infected by eating leaves and grass contaminated with worm larvae, which thrive in these warm, wet conditions. A month into the rains and many chimps begin to show the telltale signs of parasitic infection, diarrhea and stomach cysts. This female cysts are the likely result of nodule worms burying into the walls of her intestines. But wormy chimps have a remedy for parasites a strange behaviour which puzzled scientists for some time until Mike Huffman deciphered it. Basically what, what the apes do is to take a leaf one at a time, very carefully and very slowly, pulling it into the mouth, folding it over two or three times, and then swallowing it. And they'll do this with up to a hundred leaves in one sitting. Multiply this by a hundred, 
and the stomach doesn't know what to do with it. It's something that can't be digested, so it naturally pushes it through the system. And within about six hours, a hundred of these leaves come charging through the intestinal tract, pushing out the worms. These rough leaves act a bit like Velcro. They purge nodule worms from the chimpanzee's innards. Aspilia and some 40 other plants used by great apes for the same ends all have the same physical properties in common. A rough, hairy surface. It looks like Aspilia. I have to clean it out and see. It could be. No, it's Luago. Tickets exasperata. At the higher ratio than average, usually we have two leaves per one adult worm. But in this dung, we've got maybe four leaves top, and we've got 10 worms so far. Across Africa, chimpanzees, bonobos, and gorillas ascribe to this same treatment. But witnessing it is rare. We know now that chimps self-medicate early in the morning or on an empty stomach, and more often during the rainy season when parasites are active. Chimps build sleeping nests at night high up in the tree canopy. But when they're tired or unwell, they often build them during the day to rest in. This young chimp is collecting a powerful medicinal plant. It's not Aspilia, but a plant called Venonia amygdalina. Venonia works in quite a different way from Aspilia. Instead of scouring the gut with bristles, the bitter pith inside the stalk poisons intestinal parasites. The pith contains chemicals which inhibit parasite activity, as well as actually killing some microbes, which also infect humans. The Tongwe people of Mahale use this same plant as medicine. Mohamedy Kalunde knows all about this plant's properties. He's not only a tracker, but a traditional healer. We use this Vanonia plant, which we call Mujonso, to purify blood and for a number of ailments. We boil this herb, then cover ourselves with blankets. As we do this, we inhale the steam, which makes us sweat a lot. This helps in the cure of malaria. Chimpanzees have a complex treatment system. They can combine chemical remedies like Venonia with mechanical ones like Aspilia to combat sickness. On top of that, their daily grooming ritual keeps the skin parasite-free. But do primates understand that they're targeting the causes of sickness when they swallow these plants? If they did, we might expect them to use the plants with which they treat some ailments and apply them to cure others, like wounds, for example. But they don't. Capuchins don't use citrus and antihistamine on cuts, which would speed their healing. And this rhesus macaque uses only water on her gash. Perhaps even intelligent animals are not aware that they're targeting the causes of their illness, but simply seeking relief from uncomfortable sensations. It's difficult to know that, and in fact, many human societies may not all be aware of exactly what they're targeting when they take medicines that make them better. They all have their ideas of the causes of illness, but it may not always be the correct interpretation. But I think it's safe to say that chimpanzees and other animals indeed do know when they're not feeling comfortable and then coming across ways that make them feel better. So they don't have to know a lot of detail to be able to treat a symptom and to know when that symptom has disappeared.
From the rules of simple hygiene to complex treatment of symptoms, it's only in the last two decades that science has begun to appreciate the evolutionary pressures that force animals to take their health into their own hands. Perhaps animals know more than we think. Only as long as their wild habitats survive will we learn more about the potential of nature's pharmacy and the potency of animal medicine.